Let's go ahead and uh, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. And good to see you folks this, uh, uh, this memorial weekend. Um, we are remembering uh, those who have um, served and given their lives. Uh, I can stand up here free and uh, preach the Word of God just as it is to uh, people as they are. And I can do that freely, and that freedom has been paid for. It has quite literally been purchased uh, with the lives of men and women uh, that have, uh, have been sacrificed. Uh, in the uh, showcase in the foyer, there are a couple of letters from Western Union, I believe dated 1944. Um, delivered to uh, the McKibben family in Lance Creek, Wyoming, uh, informing the family that their son had fallen in battle, uh, the island of Tarawa in the Pacific. And um, <clears throat> you have, if you have letters, if you have uh, uh, anything you want to share, um, by all means, uh, let me know, and we'll, we'll display that as well over uh, Memorial uh, Weekend. And so uh, that was, but uh, <clears throat> those letters uh, are uh, speaking about my, uh, my wife's uncle, her, her mom's uh, brother, William McKibben, and uh, so... All right, First uh, Corinthians, and uh, we're just going through the letter to the church at Corinth. Um, and this morning, we will pick it up at uh, verse number 13, and we'll read uh, <clears throat> some other verses as well. Um, verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest. Um, er everything's going to be brought out into the open, um, manifest. Um, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Of course, this letter is addressed to those who are saved. Okay. This letter is, is uh, to um, the church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so... This is speaking about the work or the works of children of God, Christians, believers. And um, verse 14 continues on, If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Okay, so um, it's all going to be uh, brought to out into the open. You know, uh, what does that mean? Well, it means all of the motives, the motives. That's why. The child of God does what he or she does in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, let's bring it a little closer to home. Why am I here this morning? Why am I here? Why, why did I make the decision to attend this Lord's Day? You know, all of that's looked at. Uh, there were five men yesterday 
that I'm, I'm aware of. There may have been others, but five that I'm aware of that met here yesterday for uh, the great commission of Jesus Christ to go preach the gospel, uh, spread the saving message of Christ out. Uh, and, and why? Why did I attend? Why did I make the decision to participate yesterday? See, it'll all be, at this particular judgment, the official, the official uh, judgment uh, is uh, the uh, judgment seat of Christ, the, the Bema seat of Christ's judgment. And if, if, I, um, if I give, uh, if I give an offering, uh, you guessed it. Why? Why did I give an offering? You know, see, um, God's going to, at this judgment, he's just going to uh, pull the, you know, the, uh, uh, just going to, it's all going to be looked at, the motives. Now, in verse 15, if any man's work, shall be burned, uh, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, that is probably uh, one of the greatest verses for salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone, that uh, is found anywhere in all of God's word. If any man's work shall be burned. <laughs> so if the uh, motives for why a man or woman of God do not meet uh, or do not pass the judgment and they're all burned up. All the works are burned up because all of the motives were self-serving or self-centered rather than for the glory of God. If all those works are burned up, did you see what verse 15 says? But he himself shall be what? He's still saved. So if all of his works are burned up, he's still saved. Because we're not saved by works. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Amen? And not of works. No, they're, no, it's, it's all mercy, it's all the grace of God, but um, those uh, rewards, they most assuredly uh, can be lost, but uh, salvation is not a reward, it's a gift. Now, um, let's drop down to uh, verses uh, 1 and 2 in chapter 4, just right uh, there beneath. Um, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Verse 3, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, 
but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest, and here it is, the counsels of the hearts. And then, so following the judgment, after all the counsels of the hearts, because where does God look? Where does God always look? The Lord looketh upon the heart. And, and he's always looking at why. You know, why? It's with God, it's, it's why are you serving? Why are you helping? Uh, whatever it is you do in Jesus' name, why? And uh, then shall every man have praise of God. All right, let's, uh, let's pray, and then we'll, we'll, we'll want to be over in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. <clears throat> and uh, in Luke, chapter 16, uh, God gives us um, a wonderful illustration of this judgment and so we'll look at uh, the we'll look at the application of this. Um, and uh, and what it is that God is uh, going to be looking at during this uh, this judgment seat of Christ. But let's let's go ahead and pray and uh, let's ask God's help and God's blessing and. Let's remember those who cannot be here because they're, they're sick. I, I, again, want to say thank you, church, uh, for your prayers. Uh, and uh, just so thankful uh, that I get to be here. And uh, uh, let's pray. Father, Lord, uh, we're just so thankful for the testimony of uh, uh, a family, uh, Sister Jocelyn, her family precious, precious baby granddaughter who has been through so much. And this is what we know, Lord Jesus, at no time uh, uh, did she ever go through any uh, thing that she, uh, that she went through uh, without your, your presence in her life, Lord. And uh, we, we believe that everything that she felt, you felt. And that you were right there uh, for, uh, for this precious, precious little girl, Lord. We thank you for uh, the miracle of healing. Uh, the doctor um, said one for the books. <laughs> and uh, we say glory to God. And uh, we thank you for spiritual healing, Lord, as well, uh, physical and spiritual healing in, in, uh, um, in Crystal's uh, life. And now we pray for her husband, Lord, that our prayer is that he will very soon uh, come to know you as his own personal Savior. And we'll continue to pray for that, Lord. Um, Father, we uh, remember uh, there's uh, those who cannot be here. We, Lord, uh, just pray you'll encourage them. It's, just, uh, it's hard to miss uh, church and uh, fellowship and, and uh, just these times of worshiping and praising and thanking you to be, to be stuck at home with illness. And Lord, just help our brothers, our sisters in Christ uh, and uh, restore them to good health and wellness. And our prayer is they'll be back again with us very soon, Lord. And then uh, we think about, um, we think about some, uh, uh, there's just a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain a lot of suffering, God, that is so deep. 
I, it goes beyond our ability to comprehend it all, but, but um, if anyone understands the pain of losing a child, you do, Heavenly Father. Losing a child to uh, a violent death, you understand it. Uh, families that are hurting right now, Lord, uh, across this nation, God, and, and no doubt their relatives, their loved ones, even elsewhere in the world, God, I, I pray that many will come to know Jesus for uh, these actions are uh, uh, clearly uh, the work of the enemy. And um, God, we pray that uh, many would come to Christ for salvation, for comfort that only he can give, for peace. Oh God, clearly uh, we're living in the last days <clears throat> and, uh, and clearly the earth is filled with violence and uh, you said uh, those would be the conditions just preceding uh, the return of our Savior. So, Lord, get us ready. Lord, help us, I pray, to, uh, to uh, not, uh, uh, not live lives of vanity, of foolishness, but, but to deepen our walk with you, our relationship with you, uh, to prepare to meet you uh, as we think about Bible prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. Um, oh God, I pray you'd give us what we need now from your word in light of eternity. <laughs> uh, God help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, <clears throat> Luke and uh, chapter number 16. And so, so we think about uh, judgment. Um, and uh, let's begin at verse number one. And Jesus gives uh, really this wonderful illustration that he, he brings an eternal truth um, that uh, we, I, I believe that this illustration helps us to understand. And so, uh, verse number one, and he said uh, also unto his disciples, uh, there was a, a certain rich man which had a steward. And uh, the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So Jesus is uh, painting the picture, so to speak, and, and so we're introduced to at least two characters at this point, and uh, we have a, a, a man who, who owns a great deal of, of resource, of much substance. Jesus calls him rich man, and he had a steward uh, that would be a servant who is assigned the responsibility of using the rich man's resources according to the will of the rich man. And so, um, word comes to the rich man that the steward has been wasting his goods, which would mean that the steward is not using the money, the resources of this rich man in accord with the rich man's will. And so, you know, word comes back that he's wasting your goods. 
He's not using them uh, the way that you have uh, instructed him to do so. Now, verse number two, and uh, he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? So here is the judgment, the illustration. And it would do us well to meditate on this, to think about there is coming a day where each one of us will appear before the Lord Jesus Christ and we will give an account. We will be questioned. And we are going to be required to explain what we've done with what belongs to God and explain why we did it. It would do us well before the fact to be thinking about this, understanding that we could hear the trump of God, the shout to come up hither and go to be with the Lord in the air just any moment now. And... Uh, and so uh, he says in verse number two, he says, uh, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. And so everything belongs to God, and our part is to do with everything that belongs to God according to His will. And He gives us His will in His Word. Look at verse 3. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. Wow. Um, do we want to lose the stewardship? Do we, do we want to be uh, deemed by the Lord as being unfaithful in uh, stewarding what belongs to Him? Do we want to break uh, His trust um, that we're going to manage his resources according to his will. <laughs> uh, look what he says in verse number three. He says, uh, for my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. He says, I cannot dig. And, and to beg, I am ashamed. Verse four. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Now, please understand, uh, God is, is using uh, the story uh, of, a, stu of a, a rich man, his steward. Um, that is not to say that they are saved, but it illustrates an eternal truth. And God wants to teach us from uh, life 2,000 years ago an eternal truth. I mean, this is the way it was. There were rich people, they had stewards, and uh, some were unfaithful, some were faithful. Um, but uh, we have a steward in trouble. 
in, in this uh, illustration. Notice in, uh, in verse number four, now watch this. Uh, he says, I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him. So everybody that owed the rich man money, the steward contacts all of them, and he's got a plan. And uh, so, verse number five. So he called uh, every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he, the steward, said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. So make a payment of fifty instead of a hundred. Pay fifty, he says to the debtor. Then he said to another in verse 7, And how much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. So he owes a hundred, but he says, Just pay eighty. Four score is eighty. Now, what's happening here? Well, the way, the way the, the, this system worked 2,000 years ago, the rich man would sell these commodities to buyers, and the rich man would say to the steward, now, whatever amount you can charge in addition to what I'm charging the buyers, you can keep that. And so the stewards would then have income from the amount they would tack on or that they would add to the price of the owner. And so it's important to understand uh, that's how it worked, and that's how the stewards made their money. And so what is happening quite literally is the steward is not giving away the money that belongs to the master or the money that the master has coming for these goods and these products. What the steward is giving away is he's giving away the money that would have come to him, but he's giving it away. And so the master is still going to get the money that is owed to him, but the steward has given his away. And so um, let's go to verse number eight, verse number eight. And so uh, the Lord uh, commended the unjust steward. So uh, what God wants us to understand, uh, this, this is not about a saved person. This, this illust illustration, um, the steward is not saved. In fact, he's unjust, he's unsaved. <laughs> but God is going to bring home an eternal truth to those who are saved uh, by this action of an unsaved steward. And, and so we'll see what that truth is. And um, verse number eight. So 
the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Now, now watch this, look at this. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Who are the children of light, by the way? The children of light refers to whom? Uh, to believers, to Christians. People of faith, those who know Jesus Christ as personal Savior, uh, God calls them the children of light. But God says, I mean, it's, it's amazing to me, um, the Lord says that um, the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Are you kidding me? That is a powerful statement. Jesus just said, at least as it pertains to this illustration, the unsaved are wiser than the children of light. It's, it's incredible to me. How can that be? This lost person is wiser than God's children. Now, what's the truth that he wants to bring home? Well, he kind of brings it all uh, to a capstone thought. And uh, let's look at verse number 9. And, uh, and the Lord, uh, you know, he's, and I say unto you, now uh, you, meaning believers, the saved Christians, now watch this. He says, make to yourselves friends of the mammon, of unrighteousness, um, relationships uh, during this life, during your time upon the earth, prior to, before going to heaven, Jesus says, make to yourselves friends of, of the mammon, uh, of unrighteousness that now look what he says to Christians to his own people he says that when ye fail what does that mean when ye fail it means when you die and, and you go to the Greek language that's exactly what it means the word fail means to die Jesus says uh, before you die, make friends with uh, the, the unrighteous. And so uh, we think, how do, how do I make friends with people that are unsaved? They're unjust. How does that work? I mean... Um, well, my best friend on earth is, uh, it lives in the state of Wyoming, and one day in the hallway at school, he looked over to me and he invited me to his church. I accepted the invitation. Got saved. And why is he my best friend? He dared to reach out to me with God's love and invite me to a gospel preaching service and I accepted Christ as my Savior. He's my friend for the rest of time and for all of eternity. Uh, he gave and shared God's love. His family gave in the church that they attended, gave their time, gave their talents, even gave of their treasure 
to the work of God so that lost people like me could come and hear the saving message of Jesus Christ and be forgiven of our sins and saved from hell on our way to heaven. And he made a friend of me by giving of his time, of his talent, and even of their treasure. Um, now, I didn't get saved the first service I attended. I should point that out. But for probably a month, every single Sunday, that family had me in their home enjoying these... Oh, his mom was a great cook. I mean, incredible Sunday dinners. And, and then they'd, uh, they'd have board games on Sunday afternoon. And I mean, I felt like I was part of the family. You know, um, what else could they have done? Well, the family could have gone home on a Sunday and uh, kept all of those blessings just to themselves. They could have, instead of entertaining a guest in their home, they could have taken a long Sunday afternoon nap. I mean, I mean, this went on for uh, at least a month. And then, of course, there was that Bible preaching service. Um, all of God's love uh, being uh, directed at me in uh, those very real ways of family sharing their, their time and sharing uh, all of that good food and, and sharing God's love and making me feel uh, welcome and, and just a part of the family and all of that, all of that giving, all of that sacrifice, all of that serving, it resulted in me coming to trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because of the way I saw Jesus in their lives. And, and so uh, they made a friend of me by all that they were giving in order that I would come to know Christ as my own personal Savior. Um, here's an illustration from the life of an unrighteous person that Jesus says is wiser than the children of light. Wiser because he gave up. He gave up what would have otherwise been his. He gave all of that resource up so that when his master put him out of the stewardship, he would have friends of unrighteous mammon that would open their homes, that would have him come in, that would give him lodging, that would give him food. And uh, Jesus says... He's wiser than my own children. He's preparing. This unrighteous steward was preparing against a future time. He was making ready for the reality of what was ahead for him. So that instead of being friendless, he would not have to be out sleeping under uh, some open sky and destitute and lonely and friendless. And how did he accomplish that? By giving. He gave. And Jesus says he's wiser than the children of light. Such an amazing illustration from the life of an unrighteous man to teach 
children of light and eternal truth. Um, And so Jesus says in verse number nine, I, I say unto you, to you, child of God, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. That when, Christian, when ye fail, when you die, Jesus is talking to his children, when you die, now look at this, they may receive you into what kind of habitations? (sighs) Jesus says to his children, he says, uh, here's the lesson from this illustration. He says, if you want to have friends in heaven, everlasting habitations that will receive you into their dwelling places, into their heavenly homes, he says, you, you, you learn from this lesson of an unsaved man about giving. You see, uh, And so when he was cast out of the stewardship, uh, the people that he gave to, the people that he gave away, what he could have had for himself, he just gave it away. Um, But he had a place to stay, he had a place to eat, he had friends beyond his stewardship that welcomed him in and said, hey, we remember you. Hey, you helped us. And uh, you come on in. And uh, there's the bed. Dinner time is at such and such. Wow. Now, look at, uh, you know, mark your place here, but look at the Gospel of John. As we think about these everlasting habitations, uh, folks, uh, We need to be, we need to be getting ready um, to meet the Lord, and we uh, we need to follow this lesson from an unsaved person. Wow, who gave, uh, and he had friends when um, he was no longer steward, and that's the lesson: is um, giving that others can come to know Christ. Giving of your time, and praise God, there's some folks, I, I mean, I, you know, who gave of their time uh, so that others could know to come, to, uh, could uh, have the gospel, so that others um, can come to know Christ as their own personal Savior. Uh, and, uh, Look at this, uh, John 14, everlasting habitations. I mean, what is that all about? Uh, Heavenly home. John 14 and verse number one, Jesus says, uh, let not your heart be troubled. He says, ye believe in God, believe also in me. And a lot of people will say, I believe in God. It's just... uh, when, when the subject shifts from God to Jesus, it's just interesting how uh, the whole spirit can change uh, and uh, the whole subject can change when it goes from God to Jesus. But Jesus says, believe also in me. Here it is, verse 2, these everlasting habitations. In my Father's house are many mansions. Now I want you to notice something. And and please see this in verse 2. In my Father's house. How many houses? That's one. That's singular. One house. But in this one house, the Father has made many dwelling places. It's one house. But there are many, many living spaces dwelling places in that one house. Here Jesus refers to those as mansions. But it's all in the Father's house. Uh, And he says, if it were not so, I would have told you. 
Um, I go to prepare a place for you. Now these are among his last words on earth just before ascending back to heaven. And he's telling them what he's going to be doing while they're on earth uh, preaching the gospel. He's telling them, I'm preparing a place for you and it's in my father's house. It's For you, it's a mansion. And he says, uh, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Um, and whither I go, you know, and the way, ye you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So let's go back to Luke uh, chapter number 16. So um, friends or friendless in heaven? Which will it be? Friends or friendless in heaven? And Jesus uh, illustrating and and teaching us uh, the importance of... um, of managing his resources according to his will. And we're going to be judged. And uh, we'll, we'll be judged for our stewardship of, of all that belongs to him. And by the way, how much does belong to him? Um, let's... Uh, How much does belong to him? Now, uh, Psalm 24. Let's let's just let God speak to that question. How much belongs to him that I steward? How much of what I steward is actually God's property? (laughs) How much is mine? How much is God's? Uh, How about this? Psalm 24 and uh, look at verse number one. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. So how much of it, how much of it belongs to God? Well, That sounds like um, it all belongs to God. It all belongs to God. How about Psalm chapter 50? Let's look at that. Psalm chapter 50. And uh, verse number 12. Let's see what we find there. Psalm 50 and verse number 12. Uh, Here God speaking uh, says, "If, If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, For the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. So, clearly, um, how much of what I'm stewarding is God's, and how much of it is mine? Well, it's all God's, and none of it is mine. And uh, I get to I get to explain to Him what I what I did with everything that belongs to him that he trusted to my steward. I mean, that's what he's doing. He's trusting it, trusting it to to my stewardship to use according to his will. And the lesson from uh, the unjust steward or the unsaved steward is 
Here's a man that's wiser than, God says, wiser than my own children. I mean, he's actually going to have friends that are going to take him in because before he was put out of the stewardship, he gave. He gave away what he could have clutched and grabbed and held on to, um, but he gave it away. And Jesus says uh, to his uh, children, wow, he says in verse number 9 of Luke 16, and verse number 9, he says, when ye fail, uh, that when ye fail, when you die, Christian, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Wow. Uh, and so how how should we be getting ready uh, preparing um, clearly uh, by by using God's resource uh, in the great commission of Jesus Christ. Now Luke 16 and, uh, and verse number 10. All right. Uh, he that is faithful in that which is least um, is faithful also in much. Um, So, God is very aware of how, what, how we're handling his resources here on earth. And if he finds us faithful handling his resources here on earth, then he'll find us faithful with the, that which is the true riches, eternal riches. Uh, if we're faithful now, then he's telling us we will be faithful to him in the millennial reign of Christ upon the earth. Uh, faithful in his work, his service, with the true riches, the eternal riches, if he finds us faithful now with the temporal. Um, verse 11, if, uh, uh, well, actually, I'll read, finish reading verse 10. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. <laughs> See, we're being watched, folks. We are being watched with how we're handling everything that belongs to God, what we're doing with it. Uh, are we using it? To, are we giving to reach others for Christ? Uh, will we have eternal friends uh, in our heavenly home? Uh, people that came to know Christ because we prayed for them, because we took the gospel out to them, uh, because we gave... Um, making it possible to get the gospel to them, uh, that uh, they might know Christ as Savior. Uh, wow. Uh, verse number 12. And uh, if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, referring to that which belongs to Jesus, if we've not been faithful uh, with his property, uh, who shall give you? Who shall give you that which is your own? I mean, uh, verse number 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or riches or money. It's one or the other. And so 
What a great, uh, what just this powerful lesson from the life of an unsaved person who made friends upon earth because he gave, he gave away what he otherwise could have kept for himself. He gave it away and they took care of him. And so, um, I would title the message this way, Friends or Friendless in Heaven, Which Will It Be? Let's pray. Uh, Father, I I find this um, just just an amazing lesson uh, from from the life of a lost person that you're using to teach me uh, a, ch- a child of light, somebody that, that does know you as my personal Savior, and uh, wanting uh, me, wanting all of your people um, to, be thinking, to be thinking beyond uh, whatever days or years we may have left here upon the earth, but to be thinking against the time uh, that we're going to die and uh, we're going to appear before you at judgment. We're going to explain, we're, we're going to be required by you to explain what we've done with all of your property and then to explain to you why we did it. And then beyond the judgment um, is uh, our Father's house. And, uh, and, and the mansions. And will we have friends? Because we gave. We gave what, well, what we otherwise could have kept and lavished upon ourselves. Um, or, I mean, will we have friends or will we be friendless because we, because we just decided not to give? That others, uh, that others could uh, uh, come to know you. Uh, Lord, uh, giving uh, for um, your work. God, the great commission of Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, I I just pray that uh, whatever it is you're purposing to do uh, from your word today, that, uh, uh, Lord, thy will be done, Father. Help us to think beyond today. Help us to think beyond the moment. (laughs) Help us to begin to think uh, in light of eternity, What's ahead as, it, as uh, we steward, we manage your property? Um, and uh, God, will we have friends or will we be friendless? And uh, it, it all seems to come back to our stewardship. Uh, Lord, uh, God help us, I pray to make wise choices uh, in the handling of your property as it concerns uh, the gospel, souls being saved, your work here upon the earth. And I, I, I do pray, Lord, that, you, that we'll not break trust with you, uh, that we'll not be put out of the stewardship, um, but that you'll find us faithfully uh, managing your property, that you would then trust us with the true riches of your work beyond this earth, beyond this life. God, uh, thy will be done. And Lord, if there are precious souls uh, that have never before accepted Jesus, uh, he's the only way to heaven. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, today you draw them to Christ for salvation.